Hi, E6. So now I'm going to recap Tuesday's lesson for you. So I'm just going to share my screen. And grab the PowerPoint. OK, so today we're going to be answering fraction word problems. So you'd firstly begin by doing the five minute starter. And then we're going to recap finding a fraction of an amount because the last time we did this was on Thursday and we need to use this today. So, for example, if I was finding three quarters of 32, I know my whole amount It's different to what we did yesterday. So I've got three quarters of 32. My whole amount is 32. So now when I draw my bar, I know that the whole bar is worth 32. And I need to split my bar into four equal pieces because my denominator is four. So I know that 32 is representative of four parts. OK, it's a total of four equal parts. So I need to work out what three quarters is. To work out what three quarters is, I firstly need to work out the value of one quarter, so the unit fraction. So what do you think I need to do with 32 and to work out the value of one part? So if 32 is worth four equal parts, how do I work out the value of one part? What do I do with 32 and four? Yeah, I divide. So I'm going to do 32 divided by four, which equals eight. Now eight is worth one quarter. Okay, eight is worth one quarter. So if eight's worth one quarter, I now need to use that to help me work out three quarters. So either I could fill in my bar as I know that each bar and each part is worth the same amount. So if that's worth eight, that's all worth eight. And I could add three of those eights together. Or I could simply do, if I know one quarter is worth eight, I could do eight multiplied by my numerator. So how many parts we want to find, how many parts we want to look at. And eight times three equals 24. So three quarters of 32 equals 24. So in the lesson, we would be going through some other examples of those on our whiteboards and in your books. So we can see that you're using the bar model correctly. So now we're going to move on to today's lesson. Now today's lesson, we are going to use the bar model to answer two different types of word problems. Finding a fraction of, of an amount, which is what we did on Thursday, and we just did a quick recap of, and finding the whole amount, which is what we did on Friday and recapped yesterday. So firstly, there's three steps. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, do you know the whole amount? So read the question, underline the key pieces of information and ask yourself, do you know the whole amount? If you do, then you're finding a fraction of an amount. And to do that, you first need to find out what fraction you are trying to find, because sometimes the fraction that they give you in the question is not the fraction they want you to find. So again, draw your bar model and then divide your whole amount by your denominator and multiply your unit fraction answers, so the value of your unit fraction by your numerator. Going back to step one and asking yourself, do you know the whole amount? If you don't, then you go straight on to step three, which is where you are trying to find the value of the whole amount or quantity. So draw your bar model and then divide the amount you've been given by your numerator and then multiply that single unit fraction value by the denominator. So let's go through an example. So a box contains 560 counters. Seven tenths of the counters are green. How many counters are not green? So I need to ask myself first, what is the key pieces of information? Well, I know that a box, I'm visualizing it, contains 560 counters. And I know that seven tenths of those counters in that box are green. But the question's not asking me to work out how many are green. It says how many are not green. So am I trying to find seven tenths? No. So first question, going back to step one. Do I know the whole amount? Yes, I know the whole amount. It's already told me that this box contains 560 counters. So this tells me that I'm finding a fraction of an amount. But I'm not trying to find seven tenths. So step two is I need to find 
what fraction I'm trying to work out. And it's not seven tenths. So seven tenths are green. I'm working out how many aren't green. So what do you think that fraction would be? What do you think that fraction would be? So I'm going to use my bar model to help me. Some of you might already know off the top of your head. But firstly, I would split my bar into 10 equal parts, as you can see here. And I know that that whole bar is worth 560. Now I filled in what I already knew. So I knew that 7 tenths are green, which you can see here. But I'm not trying to work that out. I'm trying to work out what are not green. So I can look at my bar. This is why we asked you to draw the bar model. I know that I've got three out of 10 equal parts left. So I know that I'm trying to work out three tenths because that's the part that's not green. So to find out first the value of the unit fraction, so one part, I divide my whole amount, so 560, divided by my denominator, so how many parts I have. So 560 divided by 10, which equals 56. Nice, easy one to do off the top of your head. So if one tenth is 56, I then need to work out what three tenths are. So all I need to do is do 56 multiplied by my numerator, so 56 multiplied by three, and that's your answer. Now, some other questions. You might not know the whole amount, so let's read this one. A zoo lost three fifths of its animals as 150 of them escaped during a storm. Cool, can you imagine that's chaos. How many animals did the zoo have in total before some escaped? So I need to ask myself that key question. Do I know the whole amount? Do I know how many the animals had in the zoo before they escaped? No, I don't. But I do know what? I do know that three fifths is worth 150. So I know that 150 animals, three fifths, that is, escaped during the storm. So now I need to draw my bar model. So how many parts do I think I'm going to split my bar model into? Five, well done. And then I can fill in what I know. So as you can see, I've highlighted three fifths because I know that three fifths is worth 150. So to work out the value of one part, which we need to do first, you're going to do 150 divided by three. So that's what my numerator is. So that 150 is worth three fifths, so three parts. So to work out the value of one fifth, one part, I do 150 divided by 3. That tells me that that's 50. So 1 fifth is 50. OK, if 1 fifth is 50, I can then fill in the rest of my bar. If that's worth 50, that is, that is, that is, and that is. And I could simply either add them all up, or if I know that 1 fifth is 50, then I could multiply 50 by how many parts I have, which is my denominator. So 50 multiplied by 5 equals 250. So that's a quick summary. We would go through some others in the lesson together. And then at home, you're going to do this table. So firstly, you need to read the question, underline the key pieces of information, then tick if you know your whole or write yes, whatever's easiest for you, yes or no. If you do put yes, then you go to the next column, which says if yes, what is the end point? So what fraction are you trying to find? So just looking at this question, two six of a group of 90 children attend a computer club. How many children go to a computer club? So I know the key information is there's 90 children who go to the club. And I know that two six of a group of 90 children. Sorry, I say that again. I know that two six of a group of 90 children attend a computer club and it's asking me how many children go to a computer club. OK, so. Do I know the whole amount? Yes, I know that there's 90 children in total, so I'd write 90 there. And now it's asking me, so I move on to the next column, what fraction am I trying to find? Am I trying to find 2 6 or am I trying to find the remaining? So what's left? Am I trying to find 4 6? Well, it says 2 6 of a group of 90 children attend a computer club. How many children go to the computer club? So it is just 2 6. If it said how many children do not go to a computer club, what do you think it would be? Four, six. So now you know that, then you can actually work it out underneath, okay, using the bar model, and then you write your answer in. 
If you read a question and you do not know the whole, you do not fill in these two columns at all, because that means you are needing to work out the whole amount, but you'd still write your answer there. Have a go. And when you've attended the session anyway on Tuesday, you will have a lot more knowledge, but this is just a recap. Okay, I'll talk to you about Wednesday's lesson very shortly. Bye.